Hi, I'm Mike from the Technical University of Munich. I'm going to present our paper on DNS over Quick. So DNS over Quick is in its final standardization stage. And the main feature of DNS over Quick is actually the feature of Quick that combines the connection and the encryption into a zero or one RTT handshake. There are a lot of experimental implementations for DNS over Quick, and they are also used in production systems, for example, by companies like Edgard or NextDNS. However, there are no studies focusing on DNS over Quick to date, what we did in our study. First of all, we look at the adoption where we performed weekly scans over 29 weeks of the IPv4 address space and recorded the negotiated DNS over Quick as well as Quick versions. Those recorded DNS over Quick as well as Quick versions are highlighted here in the gray shades. And uh, the most interesting part here is that the adoption rises slowly. So we see an increase by around 46% to 1,217 resolvers in the final week of our measurement. We also see a high fluctuation. So around 52% of the resolvers from the first week are still reachable in the last week of our measurement. The blue colored bars here show the support of quick version one, which we added in the week 43 of 2021. And this is also the version of Quick which dominates in the final week of our measurement. We also see an uptake of the usage of Quick version one here in the highlighted weeks, and we can attribute this to the open source DNS server implementation of Edcard Home. Next, we take a look at the handshake times. So for our handshake time measurement, we perform hourly measurements from a single vantage point over the course of one week, where we use the list of IPv4 addresses from the adoption scans. We performed a single query per protocol, and it's important to note that we introduce a location bias here where we only measure from one vantage point. And this is why we do a comparative measurement to DNS over UDP, DNS over TCP, TLS, as well as HTTPS, where we find 246 resolvers which support all those stated DNS protocols. We perform two subsequent queries. The first is the cache warming query to populate the cache and then the actual measurement. We focus here on the handshake times where we have the limitation that we do not support TLS session resumption and early data, which we are currently working on. The handshake time is defined from the time we send the first packet for the establishment of the session until the session is actually established. And this means for our expectations, DNS over TCP should complete in one RTT. So this is just the TCP three-way handshake. For DNS over TLS and HTTPS, this is added by the encryption of TLS 1.3. So this in total should take two RTTs. And for DNS over quick, due to the combination of the session as well as the encryption handshake, it's supposed to be one RTT. Looking at the handshake times here in the CDF, we first of all can see DNS over TCP um, colored here in green to the left-hand side shows the fastest handshake times. We have DNS over TLS and DNS over HTTPS to the right-hand side here overlapping show the slowest handshake times. For DNS over quick, we find that it's somewhere in between. So it falls short of DNS over TCP, but it improves on dot and do. We can now look at the handshake to RTT ratio. So for every handshake time measurement, we also perform a protocol specific RTT measurement. And so we can divide the handshake time measurement by the RTT measurement to get the number of RTTs it took for the handshake to complete. And to the left-hand side, again, here colored in green, we can see DNS over TCP, which nicely aligns with the run RTT distribution. So our expectation here is confirmed. For dot and do, we see a distribution to, with two RTTs up until the median, where it then converges into a long tail. So this is somewhat confirmed. However, from DNS over quick, we see that around 20% follow the distribution of one RTT, where we then see a long tail with 40% of measurements actually taking more than two RTTs to complete. Analyzing this behavior, we find that this is an interaction with the quick client address validation, which is a mandatory feature of the quick standard to prevent traffic amplification attacks. However, we actually did client address validation while we reused the token which was issued in the cache roaming query in our subsequent initial frame. So according to client as well as service date, 
the client address validation is actually fulfilled. However, we find that the handshake is still limited by the traffic amplification limit. So the server stops sending if three times the amount of data received by the client is reached and waits for an acknowledgement. And depending on the size of the X509 certificate, the certificate either fits into this limit or it exceeds it, leading to no additional RTT or an additional RTT where the server waits for another acknowledgement. We find that this is not specific to DNS or quick, but a quick implementation bug in the resolvers we targeted. And this brings us to our conclusion. So we see a slow but steadily rising adoption with high week over week fluctuations. We see that Quick's potential is only fully utilized in around 20% of measurements. But despite the still unused potential, DNS over Quick already outperforms DNS over TLS as well as DNS over HTTPS. So our conclusion is that DNS over Quick already is the best choice for encrypted DNS to date. Please have a look at our paper, have a look at our code and data set, which is open source, and I'm happy to answer questions.